there's a very there's a very major dilemma uh, in the church in society as a whole where unfortunately in this country one party is uh, pro-life and the other party is pro dealing with climate change yeah. in the process of encouraging people to support elected officials who are going to fight climate change you're almost necessarily alienating the people who uh, support pro-life uh, uh, elected officials which is more important to you right now what is more important to the church right now fighting climate change or fighting uh, the abortion fight I'd say they're both part of a single fight, which is the fight in defense of life. You okay. can't separate those two out. Our political structures do separate them out, but that's because our political structures are misshapen now. They're distorted. Okay. They, they say you can't be for a holistic view of, of safeguarding life. But the church says that both of those issues are preeminent issues that we face as a society and as a world now the issue of unborn children and the issue of the, the climate and the future of the whole of the world and extinction. But in practicality, does society understand that they can be combined as, as, as a, as a yes. driving issue? Yes, they do. In that, in that uh, the, the Bishop's Conference about uh, eight years ago undertook a study, is there a way of bridging within the Catholic community this, uh, the fact that some uh, Catholics are, uh, accentuate the issue of abortion, some accentuate the issue of climate change. And they found that, in fact, yes, there is a commonality. It's an affective commonality, an affective bridge. And it kind of was, the link was compassion. But unfortunately, our elected officials control much of the country's action on climate change. That's why we have to have our elected officials change. We have to change that structure so that people don't have to choose when they're voting between safeguarding the future of the planet and safeguarding the life of unborn children.